incredible day. Um, you know when you start to really feel that shift because I really believe that we're ready for that next part and we're more accepting of it. Like before I never would really want to see ghosts with my physical eyes. Hey! I'm not <laughs> oh, not fleshies. Um, but <laughs> Apparition what, American. Yes, that's exactly the way we use the words. But what it is is now it's like all of a sudden they said, oh, it'd be picture in picture, so I won't have to freak out. And so they will, it's another way of disassociating to the fact that there's this reality that we call reality. And I'm doing a whole dissertation on reality, and it's an amazing stuff I'm finding and put together. All the stuff I knew, but now I'm putting it in order. And so the connecting of the dots. It's a story my book about self. reality. It is. <laughs> and maybe I should write a storybook about reality for everybody. And then, then how do you can create your reality? Because we learned how it begins, what, what creates the reality, what motivates the reality, and all of this stuff. But we have a ton of people on our board, so let's go right to it. Okay, so that was that person. Now we're going to go to the next person, which makes sense when we answer with area code 714. You are on the air. And before we say hello, I want to say thank you for Anthony in the chat room for saying uh, thank you for the reading, everything you brought to attention, where conversations I had this morning and different people, even uh, celebrating Christmas next year. Thanks again many blessings and we appreciate that and so we love it and if you want to send us a quick little um, testimony or people a review go right ahead to our website and then send it so thank you caller for calling in how can we help you good morning how are you we're awesome Great. how are you, show so thank, you. Far. Thank, thank you thank you <laughs> this is um Lou. Boo boo, I'm in the chat room, oh. but I'm, my name is Lynn. Okay. And I'm from California. So am I! <laughs> I just have like a, <laughs> I just have like a question. Yes. I know, um, like, uh, people, individual on to all these, like, spiritual channels, TV, radio, internet magazines, and uh, some of the reasons why they are drawn to all this, um, media, maybe they want to increase your spiritual journey growth, maybe they're curious and maybe they want education, or just like some of us, we just want answers to questions in our life at that time. Yes. What if you have a, a, a caller that calls you every single day, every show that you that you have for maybe like a week or and not that they just call your show, but they call all the other scientists, all the other shows. And I know it's a small community, so we all go to different shows. Mm -hmm. So some psychists will go to, um, you know, another friend of theirs, show, stuff like that. So they hear this caller. So you have this one caller with the same question that's calling and calling. And as a listener, I, I see that a lot, I, I hear that a lot. Yes. And I'm just kind of curious because I, there was this one caller that, that I'm, I'm just a listener and I can feel that she's getting kind of, um, she's worsening. She's getting like unstable. And the reason why I can I, I could tell as a listener, I can hear in her voice, the way she talks, the, the tone of her um, mm -hmm. voice. So you know she's getting unstable. Maybe her question is, like, is there going to be maybe a, a gentleman left her life and she wants to know if he's coming back? So then it can, it can be like more like a, a stop kind of thing. And you, and you can feel that, that it's, uh, it's kind of getting kind of disturbing now. So then um, you as a, a, <laughs> a psychic, yes, Kimberly, you as a psychic, mm -hmm. you... How can you bring this on? Because you know, number one, that it's getting to the point that you feel really, really concerned that it could be a tendency of like maybe homicide or suicide. Because I'm a nurse. I'm an emergency room nurse. And, and patients that I assess, and if once they say, oh, I'm going to kill myself or I'm going to kill so-and-so, right away I have to, um, you know, there's protocol, you have to 5150 them, I get you know, give them all, all this, all this that I have to go through, but they're in front of me. So I was wondering if this curiosity is that if you do have a caller like that, what can you do that it won't become something really ugly? 
Okay, that's a very, very I mean, good... What are, what are your limits? How do you draw the line on things like that? Okay, that is a very, I'm very good curious. question. Because the first thing that happens is when people are doing that, they aren't really awakened. They want you to give them reassurance. The old way of when we call psychics, we were looking for answers. We wanted our answers, our specific way of saying it has to be this and we want you to tell us what we're thinking. We wanted confirmations for what we were already thinking uh -huh. and we wanted to find people that were going to validate it. Exactly. So what's, when these people call in, they keep reassuring, reassuring, reassuring. They want to reassure themselves, reassure, because they want the answer they want and they uh -huh. are not going to take what they people are giving. So they will keep creating a cycle. Now, they want predictions. They want uh -huh. you to, to convince the other person they're trying to love to love you. They, they want to see if there's a magic spell. Uh -huh. they, want, they want their world and their comfort zone to stay in a safety. Now, when, I, when people call in for me that do that and I hear this, like I will give them, the first uh -huh. thing I'll do is I will give them a healing tool and then they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm thinking, uh -huh. okay, so there's usually these tell signs that tell me that they have to stay there. So I will give them an analogy. If you keep going in this direction, this is what you're going to get. Do you really want that? Mm -hmm. And I will give them, in some cases, mm -hmm. like a worst case scenario to some degree, because they have to decide, you know, if you're repeating this, this is what's going to happen. And sometimes you just have to pull from your uh, treasure chest, like I had this one lady that was not ready to take that next step of healing and create a resolution. So I said, your hells are happening because you need to be able to see that you have support from the other side. And so you find different words, you let spirit tell you so they can have comfort. Now, if this person is still uh -huh. wanting to make sure that you answer questions, predict this, and you get that other person to agree with, you know, oh, yeah, they're going to love me. Then that, what happens, you have uh -huh. to remember, your inner world creates your outer world. And that even includes having people show up to you about what you need to resolve. So you go inside and you say, okay, this uh -huh. hurts me that these people aren't doing, aren't doing this. You heal the hurt. If you say, this uh -huh. person really wants to keep yeah. holding out of the pain, then you go in and you find that if you've ever had it in the past, ever seen it in the past, then you go and heal. What you're doing is you are saying, I choose not to fuel and feed this consciousness so it has to stay in existence. And the more that you take your observation level off of it, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It just okay. means that you're going to take and it will dissolve. These issues will start to dissolve. And these people are going to not feed off of you and if they are supposed to go feed somewhere else yeah. then that's where they're going to go you can't heal them because they don't want that but you yeah. can learn to that's change true. a specific way of how you're going to project so heal thyself first Jen and they well to some degree some will become contrarians oh yes so that they're wanting a, if they're wanting a specific answer and we've had this where then we do a reading and then all of a sudden everything becomes contrary Oh, yeah, yeah, no, that, that never happens. Another reading. Ah, no, 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 that never. So the, it, they become a contrarian, so they're not even participating in how we're offering to be of assistance That's or help fair. to them. So I just I drew two cards. And one, again, is that even though you have become aware of what type of person that is, you don't feed into it because they said don't, don't, don't spark it. Um, you're, you, first of all, you're going to stand in your authenticity and say, you know, like for me, Look, I don't predict the future. I repeat what the, the stuff that you need to heal so that you can stop creating the story. And if they don't want to hear it, then exactly. that's fine. Then they can call and say that you're a bad predictor yeah. and all this. That's, you don't want them back. And what you do then is you send mm -hmm. light and love and you put it upon the matrix so that if their soul needs healing, they can. If not, then they can realign themselves with that uh, dimension. And this is their reality dimension. Mm -hmm. So that they will be aligned yeah. up with their health. It's not the same as being, so what it looks like when you're creating those dimensions is that you'll, they'll line up with their world and you'll line up with your, your world. Doesn't mean that they have to cross paths and that you have to see their destruction because they have to hit that yeah. wall. You know, and once they hit that yeah. wall, they may awaken. So again, just don't feed it, don't be put off by it, but just understand that when these people call in, your soul is saying, ah, Let's heal how that th this person is. Um, and that is you're not mm -hmm. healing them, you're healing your belief system in some sort of way. So now I'm going to ask one more card to come up. And what is it that you need to address within yourself so that you can actually help 
those souls that she, um, when people call in, and so here we go. What is it that uh, she needs to address? And that is about the intention. Your intention is you want to help heal, but you have to heal the attraction factor of the people that want to heal. So sometimes you draw on people that don't want That's to heal. That's true. And they said what happens yeah. is it interferes with what your purpose is on this planet. Because what it is is that it's, you're showing yourself the baby. It's, how do I want to put it? It's the growth of knowing. You already know this stuff, but your growth pains is that you have to bring these people into your space. And so you're moving from the baby stage to the student stage, so you're making unknown the known, and then you are starting to know, and you unknow what you know by unlearning it. Okay, now it sounds like Dr. Seuss, but mm -hmm. your intention <laughs> is that I want to help people. When you say that, notice the intensity of how I really want to help people. There is a pain, agony, loss, and when you have that's motivated by the negativity, then what happens is that you're going to draw in people that are going to keep you in that comfort zone of why you started out in your path. So if you take and you heal of the idea behind why you became this healer, then you'll resolve that pain and then you master that level and you get to go to the next level of where your purpose is. Does that part make sense? Yeah, I guess, I guess because I'm... Um been doing like I've been a nurse for so I'm so codependent. Oh. Like, you know, codependent. I just want to help everybody and blah blah and stuff like that. And it's just kind of, it's, I was just concerned about that. And I was just wondering how how you guys kind of. Um, it's a great question. Things like that. But yeah, thank you. Now there is one thing You're I'd like to do. You guys are so good. Thank okay, thank you. you. There is one thing I'd like to do, uh, as far as that Christmas present for you, is that we would like to heal a particular heart wall that um, that that seems to affect you, and be, and and is that is there's terror. Okay, so you have some form of terror that is yeah. creating a heart wall, and which then doesn't allow you to move past to go to that next part of your mastership. And so uh -huh. with your permission, Jen and I will, will send energy to roll it out. So you think about terror in any form, whether it happened to you, around you, through you, whatever it is. And if you say yes, Jen will heal. Thank you. Yeah, this sounds I feel better now, actually. Okay, so yeah. you, want, you want us not Thank to do you. it? Do you want us not to heal, to send the energy? I'm sorry, what? Do you want Jen to, to do a healing right now? Oh, yes. Okay, yes. that's what I want to make sure. Okay, okay. Yes. We, we, need your we got permission. permission. Now, what I need you to do is to think about the terror, and as she, and now, Jen, it's inherited, so you have to do it ten times. And so what we're doing is because you're thinking it, and this healing's for you, your memory is going to bring it to the surface of the emotions. The electromagnetic stuff's going to come to the surface, mm -hmm. and Jen's rolling it out, and so that your body can now release this and so dissolve it. There you go. I just felt the release. Wonderful. All right. And thank you so much for that awesome call. And, thank you. All right. Check back thank in with you. us, okay? Have thank you for day. calling. All right. Namaste. Wonderful. <laughs> Bye. Bye. All right, so we're, it's um, almost 20 after, so what we'll just do is we'll take a quick little break. And who's up next? Randy is up next after our quick little break. All right, see you in a minute, Randy. And now we're back. So, ready? Let's get turned to Randy. All right, you're on the air with Brenda and Jen. Hello. Hi. How can I help you? Uh, can you just pick up? A general so reading? A no, no. If, if you've got a specific question, we always like to answer that because that's what's weighing on your mind. But if you want a specific re or reading, or not, oh wow, they said specific reading. Okay, I'll give you a general reading, but it'll be very specific. How's that? That sounds good. <laughs> okay, so I'm creating a physical response. Um, I, I have to. I want to bark at the world. I can't. Uh, something is lingering. So, do you have a sickness that's lingering? No, not that I know. <laughs> okay, is there anything chronic? I have thyroid. And who is um, who's in your life that, that, that you always see is always somebody that's always sick? I don't know. Okay, well, let's find out. So I have to ask, if it's not a physical sim system, sim what are we trying to tell her? Oh, there is. What are we looking for? 
Oh, it's an intolerance. You physically, okay, you physically cannot tolerate something anymore. And so if we were to say, if it is a thyroid, what is it? It has to do with the, the checking out process. So grab the big book, and we're going to look at thyroid, and we're going to go from there. We have this big book called Messages from the Body, and it is by Michael J. Lincoln, and we're going to look up what thyroid is. Jen's going to give you a quick reading as I do this, and it goes right to the word penis, but I'm not going to say that out loud. Too late. <laughs> I already did. So let's go back to thyroid. Awesome. Okay. So the cards that I pulled from Wisdom of Avalon, the first card is Forgiveness. And it's about pride and leadership um, from the man. And it's so funny because as you said penis, I pulled the king card, okay, which is so about man authority, male sexual energy, things pertaining to the law and justice. So it's heal the forgiveness that <sighs> needs to take place about the pride and leadership from them. Yes, because what's chronic and lingering is that sometimes men have this controlling attitude. So you have men, you have men issues? No. No. Okay. <laughs> Do you feel it around you? Other friends have issues? Uh, no. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, we're on an investigation. So, so That's what it, we're doing Then now. the question ah. becomes, if it's not present in your life now, has it been present ever in your life um, from childhood, etc.? Uh, maybe my father. Okay, so the first thing about thyroid problems says, but not for me. So are you in a relationship? Yes. Okay, well we're going to go a little further. It says, but not for me. They have a very strong experience in life in which everything seems to be made and geared for everyone but them. True or false? Say it again, I'm sorry. I mean, That's all right. It says, they have a very strong experience in life in which everything seems to be made and geared for everyone else but you. Yes or no? Does that pertain to me or my husband? Oh, so does your husband have that belief? No. What about you? Okay, I don't we, think so. All right, we got to get back on track here. You said you had a thyroid issue? Yes. And we're going to read, and you tell us yes, no, or uh, maybe. Uh, in the thyroid problem issue, the, first, the next one that says is cowering in the cave. They fear that they will lose out all of their life, and they've always fear for their life in a form of annihilation anxiety. There is also a great deal of emotional imbalance related to the past and their personal feelings. Yes or no? Yes. Okay. And they said that is the one thing that's causing the thyroid to act or hold that energy pattern that energy pattern now my question is, is is it yours and they said yes was it originally yours no it was your father's and what happens then now it makes me ask is it inherited and the question is yes so you have an inherited emotional response but don't worry you do not blame it is what your soul said that you needed to experience the energy that's trapped is terror. So you have an emotional imbalance of terror with inside yourself. That can be healed. Yes. And if you would like it to be healed, say yes, and Jen will go and uh, do a clearing on yes. that. So go ahead. And then, how many? Um, you need in 10 because it's inherited. Now, the next thing that has to be addressed is it said infantile Tyrannosaurus. Their experience is that I never get to do what I want to do. When is it ever going to be my turn? Does that f sound like you? Ever been in the past? Yes. Okay. That sounds like me. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'll say, where is it? It's an inherited. So again, and where are we going to heal it out of? And we're going to heal grief out. So allow yourself to bring that up. Ooh, that makes my head spin. Ooh, makes my eyes close in. Um, so, oh, excuse me. It's creating indigestion. It's not, I can't process. Hold on. Okay. So you keep going. Whew, okay, now I'm paying attention to all these other physical things. You're so used to all these physical things, you don't even aware that's happening. Okay? So now, energetic pattern-wise, we have pull, um, changed electromagnetic out of that area. And now the one thing they said is humiliation rage. They have a great deal of humiliation about the fact that no one respects them. Their experience is that their existence and importance is, con is con constantly being overlooked. 
They were the odd one out in their accusatory and denigrating family. Yes or no? Yes. All right. Now, what's happening is I really feel this, and I feel like I have a gorder all of a sudden in my neck, but um, it doesn't affect my breathing as much as it affects my way of thinking. Now, that's interesting. Um, so, Jen, you are going to do an empath release, which is you're going to do it six times, and then you're going to go do it again on an inherited level ten times. So when you get done with six, you stop. Then you reconnect up. So this means that you you actually will draw people into your space that will really either have the same affliction as you, or you will then have, um, oh my God, the, it's true, I've got proof. So go ten times. Because literally it's really uh, affecting the way the blood wants to go to my brain and communicate with my pituitary. And it's a form of a checkout. Um, as we start to clear this, i got to get my head back on the game here. Uh, so do people tell you to get your head in the game? No. <laughs> okay, so I'm just trying to figure out why I hear a male's voice in my head saying that. So I don't know. When I hear, go ahead. Yes? They sort of say it. Not in those words, but they kind of say it. Okay, all right. Because so, right now I have a gentleman that's in my ear that says, like, get your head to the game. And I, that's the only clear words I could come through. So you say similar words have been said. And all I can hear is, but no fault of mine. Again, I feel like my eyes are being squished. And I'm wondering if this is the birth canal. Yeah, I'm trying to come out of the dang canal. My head's getting squished, so just a minute, I have to figure out what this is all about. Jen, uh, pick a card or two, because I have to decipher what the, they're showing me pictures, but it's not clear, it's foggy, cloudy, it's like wateriness in front of my eyes when you have it on the windshield, you got it before the wipers are used. <sighs> okay. Oh, I just took my first breath. Ah, okay, so... Oh, using her sensory system. So the communion with that innocent state needs to be activated. That it, um, because I also am tuning into that. Um, it, it it is a male authority that they may w feel like they're encouraging you. Come on, you can do your best. Da, 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 and it may be it's that head in the game, but that needs to be released because you want to commune with your innocent state, which. And it's that state of love, but that was never able to be um, activated. All right, so as I'm going through the process, process, I'm feeling the physical sensations of being born. Now, you have to understand my words may not come out correctly because I feel like I'm underwater. So it's like my nose and my throat wasn't cleared when I was born properly or at the time I needed it, so there was that little lapse. Um, so there was a shock, so the body's awakening, you have new sensory system, because I took my first breath and I smelled, and those are the two things, uh, the taste and the smell, come after you have the umbilical fluid, um, I said it wrong, but anyways, get the fluid out of your space. Amniotic. That's the word. And what happens is that, it, it's, this is another perception tool, and it said they were shocked, because the, what you end up smelling, now I'm going to ask you, do you feel like sometimes you smell like medical uh, medicine or like you've been in a hospital there's certain smells that really represent what a hospital smells like and it actually is nauseating ammonia I don't know if that's I mean, it's because that's it a could cleansing be. that they True. use in the hospital so do you feel like you smell certain smells that bother you yeah. no yeah. oh you may be totally unaware of it so now I have to understand is this you and they go yeah there's something about what you your memories are in your cells that you can't consciously remember right now, but they keep telling me there's a story, and it's important to understand the story. So now I'm going to keep going with the story. Ah, oh, now my jaw hurts. So now hurts would the she, bottom. she feel like she would lose strength? Strength. Okay. Be oh, how do I explain what I'm seeing? Did you have abuse when you were growing up? No. Okay. So I'm not wondering. Not, maybe, maybe emotional. I mean, maybe it's hard emotional abuse. Okay, not, did not your physical. parents ever have abuse? Physical abuse happened yes. to them. Okay, yes. now what I'm feeling is that I feel like some, it's one of the parents, okay, again, I feel like maybe the dad's very much present in my face, or the grandpa, but some male present is showing me that there was physical abuse, because now my jaw hurts because I made the wrong decision because I didn't live up, and I should have 
apparently known to behave uh, properly. And But how can you get a two-year-old to understand, because uh, it's no longer about being a grown-up. They expected this person to be a grown-up, and they should have known, and it's like, really? I just, when they, I, I, okay, I really got to heal that issue, because it really bothers me when parents believe that a one- or two-year-old should already know how to think like an adult, and don't be doing that. Um, but I really feel this abuse because my whole face feels misshapen. I can't seem to get my face back into the shape that it was, it's mine. And it's like, it's like they had to wear a mask or a bag over their face because of the shame and humiliation. Oh, wait a minute. Didn't I say humiliation rage? Yes, I did. Oh, let's look at that. Um, so was that oh my for God. the parents? Well, she said that she recognizes, but it's, 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 it, there's, there's this thing about the fact that she's part of her impassness is that the, the, her, her nose and her mouth, which is the taste and the smell, um, she it, it's that, knowing that familiarity in people. Oh, my ear hurts. Give me a second to figure out. Oh, God, now the left side. Look at it. Um, um, are, do you still have where people are humiliating you in this day and age right now? Uh, Her answer should be no. Really? Okay. And the reason, why, really. so the reason why is because... I just feel shame sometimes, and not because someone did that to me. It's because of my own feelings. Exactly. Because it is our inner world that creates our outer world, and it is all the things that are unresolved that we would feel these things. Now, again, it, what they're showing me is that it's like the child was abused, not you, per se, but it's almost enough where you have to put a bag on your face because you don't want people to see you. Now, was... Now, they, okay, I'm going to just go a little bit further. Was... Was, was any... Was your... Okay. Bastard son. Was any of your parents, your mother or father, ever a bastard child? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Not, not really. Well, my mother felt like that. She was. Okay, okay. Because that's what I've been feeling is that the mom has been passing this on to you. You didn't experience it, but the I'm, mom experienced it in her world. It was her that's why when, world and the pregnancy, and that's being passed on to you. No, again, no blaming. But what we're saying is energetic pattern, your soul needed to have these patterns in order to learn lessons, unlearn, whatever it needed to do in the path. But literally, I'm getting that, it, you know, there's so much shame, you have to put a bag over your face. Or you weren't a pretty child, so let's put the bag over your face. Do you see what I'm trying to say? Right, so the mom yeah. was humiliated in her existence. It, it, it can, but it's, it's both sides of the family because, again, I'm really feeling this um, strangeness. And, but you have to remember what happens as a baby is that we have to pick up the frequencies. This is why we choose the parents we do. This is why we choose the area of where we're being born. And it literally, I'm still going to be doing spiritual investigation because I don't have the correct answer to keep smushing my face. Now I'm just going to ask, where do you want me to go, spirit? And they said that you are learning to, uh, the reason you made a phone call was is that there's a part of you that's learning to find out the unknown. Everything in your world is comfy, cozy, and but yet there's chaos in it, just like everybody else's world. And they said, what's it going to take before you to wake up? And I've got to find out what that means. So what does she need to know to change so that she can wake up further to understand more of when people talk? Do, when you talk to certain people, do you feel like you don't understand what the hell they're talking about? And, Sometimes. <laughs> like that. <laughs> Do you feel like you talk to certain people and you have no idea what they're talking about or what they're saying is not even related to you? <laughs> um, I, I guess it depends on the situation. Okay. So you're, what you're doing is you're on the cusp of learning to cross that transition where you're going to start to waken up and ask questions. And so I'm looking for, they're having me shuffle cards, and they're having me look for the specific question that's in their head, and i got to connect, there it is. Um, and when we, we begin to, to awaken to who we are, we don't realize that there is hell in our life, and that uh, we can say, yeah, we have hell, but that's just everyday experience. And when people say, well, well you yeah, need to heal something, normal. what are you talking normal. about? That's normal, yeah. It's normal. And the, what they're saying is, um, inside the brain, I'm just going to give you a little science here, 
inside the brain is actually called the caudate nucleus, and it's either holds fear or joy. And if you have too much fear, joy gets sucked out. And so then it becomes a normal, happy, pessimistic, is that you don't even realize that there's a negative tone while you're happy. Okay, and there's, um, you're afraid if you ha are happy a little bit, it'll be sucked out by more fear. It's like it'll, if you're happy, it'll s draw in fear. And just imagine this, you walk into a room, it's dark, you flick on the light, what does the dark do? It learns to work <laughs> together to the point oh. where it doesn't have to disappear and it doesn't have to be destroyed, it just learns how to weave in and out. So we drew a card and it's um, well, the awakening say, stage. We're talking about normal <laughs> relationships and that kind of thing, it reminds me of this um, relationship I had in my life with this person who um, admitted in one of our classes that oh, she yeah. took my, that she would take my power. So and she what, ain't using it? She ain't using it? Yeah, I do it all the time and with that other one too, with our, with oh, another, right. with our other friend. Yeah, they, they, don't, they don't use it so yeah, I just pick it up and I use it all the time. And, you know, it she was didn't see come wrong with that. Nothing wrong. That's normal. That's what life is. That's what I'm supposed to do. They're not using it. And I didn't even realize that that was happening in my life. I didn't realize that that's how she was connected. She was completely aware that she was doing it. I was completely unaware. That's that why was she was a happy pessimistic. She can be very negative, but she's happy about the fact that she's overcome it. But yet, at the same time, she didn't. Now there's another happy, happy pessimist because you learn to take the punches. Um, go ahead, continue. No, I was just going to, yeah, because that, that was the norm. That was friendship. That's what I knew. And then, then it was, you know, when you talk about it's okay to lose your friends and, and heal them out of your life, and that's what had to happen next. But anyway, so you pick the peaks of joy and it's reversed. Do you rely too heavily on your material achievements when you assess how happy you are? Perhaps you say, I'll be happy when I meet the right lover, make the right amount of money, reach my ideal weight, and so on. Why wait to arrive at the perfect destination before allowing yourself to experience sheer delight? This is a day for joy. Take a walk. Listen to the songbirds. Scratch a kitty's head. Play with a dog. Look at a baby. And be in the awe of life, which leads to a true sense of bliss. Be alive, be grateful, and know that happiness is an inside job. Does anything make sense? To what we just said. Yes. Okay. Yes. And what would you like to say? I guess that's it. <laughs> okay. Well, that's what I felt was the end of it. You have a lot of information. If you need any healing tool and you have questions and you feel like, oh my God, I don't like this anymore and I'd like this stuff out, just remember you can use healing tools to disrupt those signals so you don't create those chemical peptides to take you back into a hell. If you are doing a particular behavior and you think that it's good and all of a sudden you realize, well, maybe that's not healthy. You can go to our um, tools and you can find out probably which one will be good for you. Right now you're at the beginning cusp of awakening into a further part of your life, which is a very good thing. And we support you by sending you light and love to help you uh, on that awakening path. Um, just re-listens to the archives. We do create videos of our shows so that you can even just watch what, how net we're acting and then whatever. And <laughs> Some people, just like to, <laughs> some people just like to join us, and we have no problem with that, because some people are more visual than they are auditory. And um, we appreciate you calling in, dear. Thank you very much. All right. Thank Stay you. Stay blessed. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Oh, you too. Thanks. Okay, we've got another color. Okay, it's a quarter after, or 28 minutes to. Why don't you just do a little uh, song and dance? <laughs> 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 We will be okay, back. Okay, that's entertaining. To subscribe that to youtube.com forward slash medicine women reveal to see the song and dance. Just kidding. All right, and tell <laughs> who's next caller is. Very uh, The sound seemed to not work, and so we said refresh, and it seemed to work with those. Our caller, we don't know whether or not they lost connection, but one way or the other, they're not there. And when you talk, go, come on our show tonight, and you sign in to sepiancom forward slash radio, you will have. This, um, the station will come up, you'll be able to hear live. It's when you enter that chat room. And if you're using Internet Explorer, mm -hmm. then you can't usually sign in. I usually have to go to, to uh, Firefox or Chrome right, Google to Chrome. Uh, sign in so I can actually participate in the chat room. And let's see what else she says. She goes, I can get into the site, I can I turn on the radio. The chat. I log into chat and it doesn't work. So that's what the okay. problem was that we were having with Internet right. Explorer. And... I mean, literally, I would sign in under, you know, 
medicine woman for you and medicine of reveal and then it was like finally I said wait a minute so then I opened up the other browser and I signed in I had no problem they kept me signed in I didn't even have to re-sign in so there's something to do with uh, there's like an app or something um, some type of thing she does Google Chrome try Firefox then um, because you know they got more work to do on the site but as far as the logging in part um, as long as you got the password and they say it's good to go right you do you have to register in. you do have to register for an account it will say register and it's your email address and then you create a password and then that's you know how you initiate things you click on the link and that kind of thing um, to get an account right so um, we don't know if it's just around here but we've had ever wonky, since wonky wonky internet, internet. Yeah, since it, Friday actually Yes, and ever since the, the killings and all of that was going on, since, um, and so, I know that the internet around here is being fixed, but I also know that Facebook probably exploded with all, um, and it could with be With everything, Facebook was could be so down and crazy over it. the weekend, it was, it was hit or miss. Uh-huh. Um, it's like you were allowed to have one browser open with one page, and the reason why I say that is because I have several um, Facebook Browse. accounts and, and fan pages and things, and that gets interfered. Uh, so, yes, yes. Keep 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 doing it. Let's do a reading of why she has having trouble getting uh, connecting with us on Sepia, because Cause this is just a clue, right? Because Octarine does, but mm -hmm. she doesn't like the chat room because it's the and I have issues with the white type on black background myself, um, but that's the way that they designed their mm -hmm. website. So we're going to look at why this has to come up for Kimberly. Okay. Um, she doesn't. I feel in a way she doesn't quite agree with some of the the shows or some okay, of the Okay, so belief so let, so then let's talk about my issue that I was creating for us to not be able to get the Sam's brow the the, yeah. the that stuff for us to even do the show when we started. I had to really investigate <clears throat> my inner world as far as the paranormal, um, the dark, this kind of stuff. And then my mom said to me because I was talking to her about this. She said. You realize that some of the things that you do actually are paranormal. I said, oh, well, yes, I guess there is that. Because paranormal, really, the definition is just what is unexplained. It's the exactly. unexplained. And, and, and I asked Spirit, why are we here? Because um, we're just another facet of that uh, esoteric, unexplained, paranormal stuff. But it is that uh, they're open to learning all of these different things. And I still have some programming uh, that, because they said, shut up and listen. It's not that I have to be warped by it, because when I was growing up, they said, oh, don't you learn about the Zodiac? They'll change you. Well, God. Don't use a Ouija board. Those are evil. And I have my own personal things about why I don't use Ouija boards. But anyway. And there are so many things about right and wrong, good or bad, and we are afraid of being possessed, hurt in one way or, or another. Program yeah, the brainwashing. And so what will happen is that you have to remember whose dream it is. And when you start to awaken, there's, uh, you, you, especially if you live in certain specific places, um, and it, it all depends on your environment. So, like if you're in the Bible Belt, you may feel like you can't be more yourself, um, or you feel like you need to be yourself and force yourself to say, hey, wake up. Well, whatever your belief systems are is really what's going to happen. But they're saying that the your part of you is a hard time listening to all that other stuff. Well, just tune into our station, and then, and that's all you need to do. And but it's the connotation that not what the show um, that station is putting out, but it's the belief system that people have around us says that it's bad, it's evil, it's wrong, and they might might hurt me. Well, some of my colleagues, you know, as an ordained Christian minister. Um, some of my colleagues are concerned. They want to make sure, and that, and because Swedenborg even talked about, you know, be careful of, it, you know, interacting with the spiritual world. Absolutely, there is, there needs to be. You don't go in blind and then just be absorbed by whatever. It's right. And the other part of the card is the wishing well, and you've learning that um, you've heard you have to be careful what you wish for. And if you are persuaded by these things, but what people, a lot of people don't realize is that watching scary movies and watching even today's shows can really affect you in the way and, and shape you and warp you into what you think that you're supposed to be. But it, all it is is showing where your consciousness is, and you can heal your inner world so the consciousness will change. I don't even turn the TV on anymore, which is funny. 
like certain shows we'll watch because we know that we're supposed to watch them. Um, we we are connected more with the the guidance of the that shapes our world into um, healing fear and resolving issues. Um, so now it is. Let's see. So, so part of changing the way you feel. Now, um, Kimberly, if you understand what we're saying, then say yes. And if not, then um, we can go a little bit further. But it's about a belief system and the connotations that you feel. And if people are, if there are some people that says, "Oh, this is full of shit," and then you come to the station to listen, and you are presented by other people's leftover thought processes that are behind. You may then think it's your thought, which really it isn't your thought. And then if you do have it and you believe it's your thought, then guess what? You don't have to feel that. You are tuning in and getting the light from us. And then you're not going to be contaminated or hurt by the others. Now, somebody had just wrote us, but they said that you're not able to read what we wrote. Well, I can't see it. You're right. Um, is that what I'm doing? Okay, Kimberly says, I do. I don't know what that means. We're married. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> Or went to went to an idea. So yeah. you said for her to say yes or something, and I don't know what that was in regards. To. Oh, it does what we what we just said is that she says she agrees with. It. I do. Okay, which is fine. Just remember, you can change some things out, tap some things out, especially if it's a belief. I'm looking in that just as you're picking empathically, you're picking up energies, especially since you had a downloading and awakening. And what will happen is that you are learning to connect up to the vibe um, and being in sync and you are learning this is another part of why I have to teach the empath class is because when you're starting to really access those gifts within yourself you are learning to be sync and in, in and out of sync with things and sometimes when you sync up with that vibration that seems to <gasps> cause you concern sometimes it's leftover crap that people have left behind because that's the astro energy that which we need to clean up as light workers but at the same time, it is that knowing what is yours and what is not yours. And when you start to realize that it's not yours, but yet there's a familiarity and maybe a little bit of doubt that, that it could hurt you, then you heal that out, resolve it down, um, you know, tapping it. Or if there's that deep thing, and if I really look and tune into Kimberly, I can say there is, I would say, do hope therapy, do R3D, because then you'll be able to heal out that shock when you meet up with that um, energies of an empath, you being the empath and you're connecting up with the energies. So if you're unable to, um, we lost sound again, refresh, that's all I can tell you. Um, because we're having that disconnection. And we're going to take this clue one more time. They said that uh, some people said they had problems with sound. Um, this has a lot to do with the, 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 the electromagnetic waves that are coming and the way the planets are changing, it can be this, that, or the other stuff. But the, the main thing of what's going on in the consciousness of why some people are still losing sound, we're not able to connect and read the questions, we're not able to be heard. Since we're not being able to be heard, we're going to look at us. Uh -huh. So what am I, uh, the person who asked the question, what energy am I put out to create my problem? Okay, so you're going to focus on your problem. If you could call in, that'd be great. Or you can write down a specific problem. But it's... Um, just remember, we get a, I'll put a 26 upside down. And what we're going to do is we're going <coughs> to focus on that. So what is, we're going to look and just focus on the problem, the problem, the problem. So what is the energy I put out to create my problem? Energy I put out. Uh, long commute, find a new place to live, but keep coming across really expensive places. Well, if, if, if the first thing that pops in my head is that you're getting closer to your goal and you're either going to be sabotaged um, that's part of it. how you do anything is how you do everything, meaning that's when you start to go after your goal, then your heart walls will go up and it'll keep you from the goal because it's about, um, like when you start dating, you find out you dated a man that was married. You're like, damn! Or you want to date and he lives far away. What? And it is that protection barrier that we create within ourselves when we get closer to what we, we really want. And when you do expose yourself to looking for things and that and the rent is expensive, then all you're doing is that you're, you're creating again the heart walls causing you to miss opportunities. So what is it that needs to be resolved? Oops, hold on. Resolved? No. Okay, so then of course this person also picks up the energies and which means that being convinced and persuaded that this is all you get. Well, if you go out in that world, that's what you're going to have to get. 
Well, it is being told instead of lurking between the lines. And Jen picking up some stuff. Yeah, you don't want to hear it anymore. Oh my god. Ugh. Meaning that all these people are just literally out there. So now, the first card I... Will you do your reading? Okay, so uh, I'm using the Wisdom of Avalon cards. Uh, so the first card is the horse, which is about accepting help from another, delegating authority. Are you able to do that? Are you able to let in people that to help? Are you able to delegate, or does it have to be um, up to your standards um, that may not even be your standards? It may be the standards that you were conditioned to believe that you had to have. So then there is the, the goblin, which is the wounded human ego, but it's reversed. So maybe the, you're seeing that that's what can shift. Okay, you're seeing how people, you know, say their stuff, they're in their human mindset, and that needs to be shifted, but for some reason, not able to let go, and it may just need to be that you need to learn how to heal, or what you can do to help let go. The card popped up is in reverse, called Sacred Pool. It can be difficult to overcome denial when there is a reward for staying where you are. If you can't accept and love yourself, you remain trapped wearing a false mask of victimhood. The benefits of embracing denial and the victim's mask is that you will never have to take a, a real risk. Again, this is part of that heart wall. Dimming your light serves no one. Turning away from the truth that is reflected in the stillness of the sacred pool keeps you in denial. And doing the same thing over and over again expecting a different result. Such vain efforts lead to tedious, boring existence. Take the risk and shine your beautiful beautiful light into the world, look into the mirror and see the truth. Surrender the need to self-sabotage. Remember that you have the responsibility not just to yourself but to the divine spark within you. Courage is not the absence of fear. Accept the discomfort of seeing with clear eyes and you'll soon find what wondrous adventures are waiting for you. Step into the magical life. Take the leap of faith. So you're not in denial as much as how people say, you're in denial, that is a bad thing. It is that you're awakening and you have no idea how you got to that spot, but you are fully aware that maybe you don't take risk. And that, like I said, I feel that there is a particular heart wall that makes you from taking risk, and they said they have three. If we have a few minutes left of the show, what I'd like you to do is say yes if you want a healing, and I will tell you, and then Jen will, re will roll it out, the first particular of the heart wall is that there is blaming, okay? And that would be just three times. And if um, the second one is failure, and then that one can be rolled out. And the third particular okay. heart wall that I'm finding is peeved. And so get into those emotions, get into those feelings. Jen will get, get connected up, and then, whoa, there's one. So that one, I think, was blaming? Yeah, it's gone. Go. Now, what's the next um, one? How many? Uh, I can't remember. Oh, failure, three times. And then peep, three times. Excuse me. Oh, it's changing the way we process. So are That's gone. Now you're going what to go. What about the other one? Peeved, it's still there. And only not the peeved. Whew. Okay, so that's, I can feel it shift. I feel like there's something else. I gotta find it. That's gone. Um, and it's something to do with an inherited, uh, um, hidden uh, one, and that is confusion. Okay, so that's ten times, and so Jen will do that. And while Jen's doing that, we're going to say thank you for all of you for being here. And remember, she will roll it out. When you just think about the confusion or how people see it confused. We want you to invite you to our show tonight. Remember, we have a Wednesday show and a Friday show. So just go to our website, find out when our show listings are, and we'd love to have you there to help support us and grow and learn. We're not here just for entertainment. We're here for much more. So we want to say thank you, and we appreciate everything. Jen, is there anything else that we'd like to say? How about if we grab an angel for the rest of the day? Oh, as soon okay. as she types. <laughs> 90 seconds. Right, so I put up our YouTube information if you'd like to become a subscriber. That leads to great. Share us so and so we can grow.
Oh, so Skating Angel says that I feel something going on in my heart. So awesome. That, the angel for today is Archangel Gabriel, which is great because Ooh. that's also the one from the Bible who gave all the news about all the little babies that were going to be born at this time of year and all that kind of stuff, which is exciting. So as you nurture a child, you nurture your own inner child. Both activities are important right now. And it's just the little angels around a little baby, so that's exciting. Exactly. So we got 14 seconds left, and we appreciate everything you do. Again, subscribe all over so that we know that you, that you want us. Tell people about us because it's time to get that message out. We are ready and we know it. And so now with your help, we can really spread the word and we can grow together. Namaste.